Welcome to the Couples Academy Show. Today we're talking about the dangers of flirting while you're married. Join us now. smoking it's not a real cigarette what it's electronic it delivers the same amount of nicotine but the smoke is water vapor yeah water. led light that's somewhat disappointing would you rather have me smoking for real i would rather you be a man who did exactly as he pleased i'm elise i'm frank that's a terrible name. <laughs> it's the only one I've got. Maybe we can find you another. Okay. You're British. Hmm. I'm American. Hmm. Mm. What brings you to Venice? You read spy novels. I'm a mysterious woman on a train. You tell me what my story is. Okay. Um, I think you'd be a diplomatic attaché. Mm -hmm. Or maybe a girl from East Germany whose father's been kidnapped. And they're blackmailing you into stealing something for them. Probably a microfilm. It's usually microfilm involved. What awaits me? Trouble, certainly. Danger. Oh, yeah. You'll most likely be shot at in less than two chapters. Hmm. Is there a man in my life? I'll have to wait and see. Invite me to dinner, Frank. What? Would you like to have dinner? Women don't like questions. Join me for dinner. Too demanding. Join me for dinner? Another question. I'm having dinner. If you'd care to join me. And there it is. The art of flirtation. And this is typically what wow, happens. It's an art. <laughs> there's an art to it. There's an art, there's a science to it, but it's appropriate for certain people in certain phases of their life. Like mm. if you're single or if you're in the process of seeking to date someone, mm -hmm. flirtation is something that you would normally do because it gives the impression that you're interested or you're seeking attraction from somebody else. Right. But when you're flirting while married, it's dangerous. And I think there's so many people who think that, unless, oh, unless you're flirting with your spouse, unless you're flirting with your spouse, flirt all day. <laughs> but there's so many people who really think that there's nothing wrong with flirting. Right. Like it's just innocent. It's harmless flirting. It's harmless. There's yeah. nothing wrong. There's nothing to it. But really, it lays a foundation for inappropriate interaction that can ultimately lead to an affair. Now, guys, we've been talking about it. We're excited about it. Uh, we are in a brand new series and we're talking about infidelity in complexity or complexities and how to overcome them. Overcoming infidelity and com uh, complexities. And we want to dig into the depths 
of this topic and give you exactly what you need. And really, a lot of uh, affairs start with a look. Mm -hmm. They start with a suggestive comment. And there's a back and forth banter that exists between a couple and it's tremendously problematic. Now, Mm -hmm. by definition, we know that flirtation, there's really two definitions. Number one, behavior that demonstrates a playful sexual attraction to someone else. Now, the only sexual energy that exists uh, should be between a husband and a, and, and a wife. Mm-hmm. But anytime you begin to have any type of sexual connection or energy or interest outside your marriage, uh, you're in the danger zone. I think I think folks that are having that issue, they're probably very much unfulfilled inside the mm-hmm. bedroom for whatever reason, right? Or the home or the marriage for whatever reason, right? Not saying it's right or it's wrong, but I'm just thinking about flirting in general that I would have no interest in bringing about that kind of attention to myself. If because I'm good here. Right. But if I'm not good within my marriage, then now I, I'm starting to look, I'm starting to give people the eye or doing whatever I need mm-hmm. to do to get that attention. I remember when we talked about the five hidden dangers of an affair. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times people think, well, if a person's involved in multiple affairs is a result of a sex addiction. But one of the things that we uncovered was um, an attraction addiction. Uh, you're addicted to attention. Mm-hmm. You're addicted to romance. You're addicted to newness. And those type of addictions could drive someone to be flirtatious, mm. even though they consider it, oh, no big deal. Yeah, and, you know, point. it's appropriate. Yeah. So if you're working with someone, if you serve in ministry with someone, if you typically see someone wherever you go to the gym, uh, wherever it is, and there's someone that you typically frequent and they're always looking at you a particular way or you're suggesting something, that's an indication uh, that you're in trouble. So we want to talk about what are these signs? What are these signs that we should be aware of? And before we get started, we just want to say good morning to all the people who are on. We have Vashon, we have Didi Jones, Yvonne. Carlos, say good to see you. Geraldine, hello. Lee Vale. Lavelle. Lavelle. Jumoke, no, is it Jumoke? Yeah, that's Jumoke. Hey, Jumoke. Yvonne, hey. she says it's blatantly disrespectful. Click that. It creates the atmosphere for an affair. Cheating doesn't start in the bedroom. It starts with flirting and a side conversation. That's absolutely right. You got it. We say all the time that infidelity doesn't begin in the bedroom. It ends in the bedroom. And there's so many things that come along the way prior to it. Mm -hmm. And and the root of it all uh, is flirtation Mm -hmm. in many, many, many respects. And then we say, well, we're just friends. And so the problem is if your conversation is secretive, that's an indication Mm -hmm that you are engaging in something that you shouldn't. Now, there's online interactions and offline interactions. And so if you're offline and you're having conversations with with someone else that you would not want your partner to know about, it's a problem. But the way that we can actually do this on a regular basis is online. And we know that statistics have suggested that Facebook in particular and different forms of social media and Internet access has been one of the major contributing factors of divorce, according to divorce attorneys. Now, here's a great um, quote. You don't actually recognize that you're growing closer to someone on the Internet because it just looks like you're having a conversation. And that's why I think that it could really be seductive in so many ways. Mm. Uh, That's from Catherine Hurtling, who's a marriage and family therapist, and I think it's important to recognize well, that yeah. these type of conversations can be problematic. Well, you know what they say, um, the, the new thing in this generation is online dating, right? We didn't do that. When mm-hmm. we were coming up, there was no online dating, but now everybody meets online. So what they said is that the benefit of meeting online is that you actually get to grow intimately with them because it's just conversation. You're finding out about the person's likes and dislikes and, you know, what music do you listen to? It's all these, you know, very intimate details mm-hmm. that are pulled out when you're dating online before you actually even meet the person that it creates a greater bond. This is why you have people getting married after six months of meeting each yes. other online. Like that is that's a norm for people to meet online and marry super fast because they feel so close and connected. Mm -hmm. So you can see how uh, uh, being on social media and texting and DMing and all this and, you know, seeing pictures and commenting on pictures can draw you closer in a very inappropriate way. Absolutely. Um, I'm not flirting. I'm just being extra nice to someone who's extra attractive. That's you see how we justify okay. flirtation is never good. It's never good. And so these are the things that we have to be mindful of. 
Online friendships often develop into intense emotional and physical affairs that devastate marriages. And so if you think that you're safe because a person is hundreds or even thousands of miles away and all you need to do is reach out to them with a click of a button or a few strokes on a keypad, you're setting yourself up for failure because there's an emotional tie that can happen online through technology. I think that, you know, people, I don't think anybody is shocked if they're flirting. I think if you're a flirter, you've known mm -hmm. that you're a flirter your entire life. I mean, I'm thinking way back in the day of little kids that their mamas and dads told them, he's a flirt, he's a flirt. You know, he likes the ladies. He's been flirting since he was two years old. He knows he's flirting. He knows. It's not like you accidentally flirt. It's intentional because you're trying to get the attention. Absolutely. And, and, and the reality is this. If you're spending a considerable amount of time talking to somebody outside of your spouse, that's an indication that you're flirting. Like there are people who will literally text back and forth for hours on end. You know, uh, at the end of the night, you know how it is. Couples oftentimes go into their own space. You're in the bedroom. I'm in the office, whatever the case may be. And then I log in online and I'm having two and three hour conversations with somebody. And it's meeting an emotional need that you may or you feel you may not be getting in your home. And then the, the reality is flirtation is not an indication that something has to be wrong or bad in your relationship. You can be in a great relationship and getting all of your needs met, but there's something within you. I think it's an easy out to blame it on the dynamics of the relationship. And though that can be a major contributing factor to your point, if I was two years old flirting, yeah. it's something that I never overcame within myself. And so when I get into a relationship, I don't have the understanding that all of this attention, energy, and focus should be on one person. I still think it's okay yeah. because I'm not having sex. And, and, it, and it's my way. And I think that um, a lot of times when it, when I see couples come in and there was an affair or multiple affairs, there's a weakness in the person that they have this inability to say no they have this flirtatious nature about them that gets them into situations and depending on your personality style if you get yourself into a situation you have a hard time getting yourself out twos tend to actually struggle with flirting um not that they're trying to get you in a sexual way necessarily it's just that some twos tend to use flirtation as a way to um be able to express and receive love and be seen mm -hmm. as loving. Mm -hmm. So you might just come into this earth with a, a tendency to be flirty and be unaware of it and have never checked it. Wow, that, yeah. that's powerful. There's a lot of comments coming in. Let's see what they're saying. Ken, tuning in from Nairobi, Kenya. Hey there. The rebuilding of trust is a huge challenge post flirtation. Yes. That's absolutely right. Absolutely right, great point. Geraldine says, we truly enjoy your wisdom at the 2020 Unbroken Marriage Virtual Getaway this past weekend. Thank you both. Thank you, Geraldine. Guys, it was an amazing event. I hope that all of you who are watching had an opportunity yeah. to register and join because it was some powerful, powerful information. Not too late if you haven't uh, to take advantage and, and buy the digital pack that you can have access for six months to get great information that will transform your marriage. Um, Janice, good to see you, Janice. Hey, Janice. As the Bible states, sin starts in the mind first. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so to me, it stands to reason that even at that point of just conversations, infidelity has already happened. If it's in your heart, you first conceive it there. You are absolutely that's right. That's a powerful, powerful point. And, and, and that's the thing. Our hearts oftentimes can deceive us yeah. and we get caught up in rationalization we begin to compartmentalize and rationalize and justify, yep. and we call it the slippery slope to moral failure. And so if there's any idea or any thought in your mind that it's okay, check yourself because it's not. Uh, daughter of, yes, what does it mean when someone says, I didn't think I would get a response after leaving a comment on a picture? Yeah, I think that's important because oftentimes on Facebook or Instagram, we make comments we have likes and loves and, you know, sexy and and then they respond to us mm -hmm. and we're putting a comment out there to get a response. Mm -hmm. And then we act surprised. When or we we'll get put one. a picture out there. Let's talk about that. I mean, let's talk about do are we trying to draw certain attention? 
we know what it is. If I'm putting out a, a sexy picture of myself, cleavage popping out, or if I'm putting up a, a photo of myself in a bathing suit, right? I mean, I'm married. Mm -hmm. What am I expecting to get? Am is. I expecting not to get flirtatious comments? So somewhere in there, it's feeding your ego and feeding some need. Mm -hmm. And that's what has to be recognized and owned. And it's inappropriate if you are married. The only person that should be feeding your ego and that need is your spouse. You know what? It's so interesting because there's a book that I read some time ago and it was talking about connection between a husband and a wife and it was talking to men. And in the book, it said the nature of a woman is to want to be seen. Right. So my wife wants to be seen by me. If my eyes are on someone else, that impacts her self-esteem, her self-worth. There's issues now in the relationship because I'm focusing outwardly instead of within. So all women have a desire to be seen. Yes. And, and oftentimes when you don't have proper boundaries around your own life, to your point, you're posting these sensual, sexual, flirtative, uh, suggestive pictures, seeking the, attention seeking the attention of other people. Yeah, there's two sides to this coin. There's the flirter. And then there's a person that's seeking the attention of the flirter. And both of them are wrong. That's right. Poor, wrong. Poor this says... <laughs> I have been a flirt my entire life and oh. I never cheated on my husband sexually, but I understand I am exactly what Danielle says. Mm. Yeah. Are you a two Corliss? Okay. Well, that makes sense. But so, so is that showing up as an issue in your relationship? That's the question. You're saying that um, you've been a flirt your entire life, never cheated on your husband. You know, it'd be interesting to hear um, from you since you put that out there. What are you getting out of that? Why are you flirting? Has it caused any issues in your relationship? I mean, share some of that because that's the meat here, what we really want to hear. Because we hear too many conversations about uh, couples complaining that their spouse is cheating, they won't stop. And sometimes, and actually most of the time, the flirter is unaware or doesn't think anything of it or plays it down. So it makes the other spouse think, look crazy, right? I see you looking at that person. That's right. You know, so share some of that when you get a chance. Just drop that in the chat. Kathy says uh, the book, Not Just Friends, is a good one for these kind of issues. Mm -hmm. It is one of the best books on infidelity that you could ever read. Yeah. And it really talks about that slippery slope. Um, so good stuff. So let, let's talk about some of these mm -hmm. dangers of flirting. You know, we mm -hmm. often talk about the slippery slope and, and what people consider to be appropriate and no big deal. And it's just this or it's just that. Yeah. So uh, the world standard of safe to unsafe we believe that, listen, any any ounce of it is unsafe uh, and can get you in trouble. But for instance, people consider harmless flirting, which includes compliments. Like I have an issue with that, right? Because I've made up in my mind uh, that I was not personally going to compliment another woman because I didn't want her getting the wrong idea or the wrong impression. And so uh, if someone's attractive, they don't need to know that I know that. They don't need to know that I think that. Matter of fact, if they're attractive, they probably already know. So they don't need confirmation <laughs> yeah. from me that I think that they're attractive. Right. Those type of words and compliments should be reserved for this one right here. Right, right. right. And likewise, right? Yeah. Yes. And also, you know, and also, you know, if you come from a church background, you get dressed up on Sunday, you know, you come into the church building and you're like, oh, you're looking smooth. You're looking sharp. You know, mm -hmm. that's where a lot of this flirtation comes in and people catch the wrong idea. But one simple shift that you can make is to compliment the couple. Yes. Like, you know, I'm a, I'm a married woman. I'm not walking up to brother such and such and being like, man, you looking good today. I like that smell. I like that cologne. What's that cologne? I got to make sure my husband get that. What's that? Like, I'm not going to do that. But if I see the couple is looking sharp, you can properly um, acknowledge that they look good because guess what? They dress it up to yeah. get a compliment. Yeah. You don't go, you know, you want somebody to acknowledge you looking good, but do it right. Right. Acknowledge the couple. And that's the whole point. Cause I remember just sharing a quick story before we got married. I think we were engaged at the time we were in church mm -hmm. and a friend of mine uh, got into a relationship and you know, we're all friends cause we're all singles. And I'm like, wow, you look good. like your hair and your dress and your this, that, and the other. And, and here I am complimenting her because I'm like, oh, my God, she's in a relationship. She's got it together. And my wife, my fiance at the time was right here and all my attention is going to someone else. So not only does it not only does it affect your partner or your spouse, they feel I'm some sure I said something. I'm oh, you, like, you did. Excuse me. I'm, I'm giving y'all the G-rated the, the G version. <laughs> but yes, you did say something. I'm but sure. also, what impression does that leave on the one receiving it? Like now they're thinking, well, hmm. 
all this, all these words and all these compliments yeah. come to me. What's going on between them? Yeah. So you're, you're, you're giving a false impression of what may be happening in your relationship. And yeah. then if you continue to compliment now that person could start dressing up to receive your That's compliments, right. getting in your way to be right. noticed, Tripping to be over seen. You by accident, bumping into you. I know you smell this new Chanel. I'm now, sorry, I didn't mean to get this Chanel cologne on you. Right. <laughs> now, 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 what if they're in a relationship with someone who doesn't naturally compliment and the compliments are coming from you? Now they're seeking affirmation, confirmation, uh, from another source instead of the one they're in a relationship with. I want to read this comment from Corliss. She responded, thank you for it. responding, Corliss. No way is it a, is it a problem because I know how to handle it. I know exactly how far I will go. My husband tells me all the time how attractive I am to him, but he cheats. So it leaves me feeling like he is lying and I need more. Okay, so that right there, to me, that speaks to so much more going on, right? And this is what we're talking about. You know, when there, when there are not, your needs are not, needs are not being met inside the marriage, we start to do th other things to meet those needs. And that's what it sounds like you're doing. He's cheating. He's not being faithful. This is not a closed marriage, right? And so now you're seeking your attention outwardly, but you still have a conviction not to have an affair. My my caution for you is that it's just it's just a door. It's a door that you open, you crack and you peek out that door with one little thing. Next thing you know, you got your foot out the door. Next thing you know, you're walking out the door into some other thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't start, infidelity doesn't just, you don't just jump into infidelity with a stranger, though some folks do. Mm -hmm. That's called a one night stand. That does happen. That does happen. But a lot of times we make these small steps that lead us where we don't want to go. And, and that's where I would caution you. And let's just say you have a core conviction that says, I will, that's just not who I am. I'm not going to do it. Never right. have, never will. Yeah. So this area is okay. Mm. Well, if you're thinking that way, it's mm -hmm. still, uh, complicated, problematic, and can lead to problems because at the end of the day, if you're flirting, um, it's creating a false narrative between you and that partner or that other person, because though it may be innocent for you, it may be creating something in that person. And I think that's what happens oftentimes. There's mixed signals in the flirtation. Yeah. For you, it's innocent. For them, it's suggestive. Yeah. And it can lead to just an uh, uncomfortable situation. Yeah. And to, to the point we made earlier, making your partner feel some type of way. Yeah. Something um, to think about. Yeah, Janice says, I think it's okay to compliment the opposite sex, but be very mindful of how it's done and the tone used set by uh, set by complimenting the person. Yeah. And, and once again, we're, we're talking about, like to give somebody a compliment Fine. It, it, it depends on what you're complimenting, right. how you're, everything you're the saying, frequency of your up, the frequency of it, right? All I mean, of that lines up. Yeah, like you know, I don't, I don't. The big deal here is, is really, it's about your heart, you know. But even when you have a good intention, you can lead someone else astray because you don't know their heart. That's why you have to be so super careful. I no longer compliment. I mean, because of what we do, what we see men and women all day long. I don't compliment men. I don't. I just don't. Because what is it going to do for me? What is it going to do for them? Why do I need to do that? And somebody else should already be making meeting that need. I don't have to be the one to meet that need to open any doors, whether intentionally or accidentally. However, like I said, when you're going out with a group of friends, you know, y'all look nice. I like, okay, y'all look nice. Y'all got it going on today. Good. You know, the what you say the last name. We always say team such and such. Team, team Jones. Jones got team it going Smith. on today, team, right, Hassani? Absolutely. Right, Hassani? Because <laughs> we are complimenting y'all. Right. And that makes a big difference. And this is how you safeguard your marriage and keep all the confusion from happening. Uh, here, oh, Hold on. I want to I want to get to this comment. Ken says, I think if people really knew the cost of flirting, they wouldn't get into it in the first place. With the expansion uh, in the digital space, people are leaning hard on online platforms to get their needs met. Yeah. People don't just cheat. They gradually get there from. You flirting. said it, Ken. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and she says, Danielle, 100 mm percent. -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So let, let's go through this list. So number one, we were talking about just these compliments. That's what we consider innocent and no big deal. But then it leads to eye contact. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. 70 percent of your communication, as you've heard to say a thousand times, is nonverbal. Yeah. It is facial expressions, body language and gestures. And all it takes is a look. I used to be the master of the look. I never had to say a word to anybody. <laughs> I stopped looking at the camera like that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about this look. I don't, what, what you, go ahead. Well, I mean, I used to, you know, I, when I was single, right, I never, a 
approached men. I never had needed to approach men, but if there was somebody that caught my eye, they knew it because I would give them some eye. You just give them a little bit of eye. And you give them a little bit of eye, and next thing you know, they see you. See, that's how you tell people. And that's the thing, y'all. See, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing with the eye. Because you could give an eye that shuts somebody down, like, don't play with me. I am not the one. Or you can give somebody an eye that says, come here. I'm available. I'm mm -hmm. receptive. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm interested too. You can do that. And that's what people are doing. Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The next one, uh, teasing someone without actually pursuing them. Mm -hmm. and, and that's often done as well. Mm -hmm. It's just almost, it's almost like uh, you begin to talk about what you could do, yeah. you, what you would do if you could do, right. but you can't do. Right. So therefore it just remains out there. Yes. Like you put it out there, but you know, I'm married. Mm -hmm. It's never going to happen. And so that, what you're doing is you're putting energy into the water yeah. and you're feeding that monster and you never know where that can actually lead. Exchanging suggestive words, right? And having body language that indicates that you're interested, like you just said, with the eyes, but also the way you position your body. Oh, okay. You can open yourself up uh, to the wrong type of messaging to the wrong person, which could lead you down a slippery what, what, slope. Break that down a little bit. You said exchange suggestive words and body language. That means... What, what would the body break that down for the folks? Right. Oh, okay. Something like just being engaging with your body language and your energy, giving somebody an indication. Uh -huh. All the flipping this your is, hair, there it is. Like, like you, know. you know, the women. All of that. All <laughs> okay. of that is suggested. Okay. Right. It uh -huh. gives somebody an indication that yeah. mm, maybe there's something there. Right. Uh, putting yourself out there if you're not available. I mean, people do this all the time who don't have proper boundaries in their marriage, and they're just so free. Right. Just so free to engage and connect. Hey, tell me about like now you're engaged in conversations that if you were dating or if you were seeking would be appropriate. But if you're married, there's just certain things you don't do and certain conversations that you don't have. Now, here's another one. When you start engaging in physical touch. So let's just say you work with them. You go to church with them, whatever yeah. the case may be. You see them oftentimes. And what you do is you just touch them. Hey, how you doing? Or, like me or something to Put like your that. hand, your foot, yeah, hand yeah. on knee, rubbing their shoulder. How you doing? Do or you're me. too close. Too close. You don't know somebody that's just too all, close. Just yes. too, all in People your space. People are coming to my mind right now. Too just close. Just too close. And too touchy. Too touchy. When you're touchy feely yes. and you're too close, it's nonverbal communication. You're flirting, and it is one thousand percent inappropriate. Mm -hmm. And then you know. Um, Having sexual conversations. Mm -hmm. Now that's when you're, just, come on. Now. I mean, that's just that's obvious. Just way off. But if you're talking about a sex scene from a movie or a sex joke just to test how somebody will respond, all of these things are indications of flirtation that can lead you. Let's go to some of these comments because it's blowing up. Let's read this one right here. Okay. It says, is it okay for a colleague to call your partner their office boo or they respond and call the colleague bae before anyone else? No. Absolutely not. Anything else to be said about that? Yes. Okay. So we have these these terms <laughs> called office husband, office wife, and it's an indication of, oh, this is someone I partner with at work. We work very close together. It could be a boss to an assistant. It could be two colleagues who are in cubicles next to each other. They're on the same team. They work together. They take lunches together. They take breaks together. They're always together. There's some connection there. And usually it goes beyond the professional into the personal. So yeah, we use these terms all the time and it is highly inappropriate. And you know what? One of my clients, um, she, she actually had it where at her job, they would, they, they paired this couple. They were a great team. They worked together. They were making deals happen. They were killing it. And they, it was a joke in the office that they were the office husband and wife. And so even the office environment was feeding into oh, yeah. that. And then she began to feed into that. We do have a chemistry and da, 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 da. No, it's inappropriate. Inappropriate. And, and if the culture of your company is not healthy, that's why you listen. I've worked in environments and there was affairs popping off left and right because things weren't effectively dealt with. All right. Here's another comment from Rhea. Uh, when one spouse flirts, it leaves the other spouse feeling that they are competing with someone else for what should be rightfully theirs. Correct. That is absolutely right. Correct. Nothing else to say about that other than it's the truth. Mm -hmm. All right. Where are we at? Yeah. Um I think. I think. I don't know. It's, it's jumping. Uh, Lakeisha says, also receiving compliments should be checked. 
Smiles and giggles can be an invitation yes. for more. I generally re- reply with, my husband tells me that all the time. Same. And make sure you compliment your wife today. Same, Lakeisha. Boom. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Same, Lakeisha. Perfectly stated. I do the exact same thing. Thank you very much. My husband told me that same thing this morning. Yes, sir. Yeah. And you know what? This is the thing. Like, you know, being out at the at the store or something like this, sometimes you get complimented. I think there needs to be a training on how to deal with compliments. You don't have to be nasty because somebody compliments you, but you can respectfully let people know. Thank you very much. I'm unavailable. Like, I think what happens is that we maybe we think that we're going to offend somebody if we let them know I'm married and thank you very much. But I'm already told that like my cup is already full. We got to find our words in advance so that we can go out in the streets and have it and know what to say. If you know you're somebody that people are always complimenting you and you feel some kind of way and you're giggling and being inappropriate and drawing more of it, then think this thing through and figure out how am I gonna respond respectfully to not insult people or shut people down necessarily, but to say, thank you very much. My husband tells me the same thing. Because maybe they didn't know you were married. Absolutely. You know, or 1, maybe, they, maybe they wasn't looking at your rock shining and they trying to compliment you anyway. But, but, but you know, in this and world, sometimes this, they don't attracts, even care. this attracts people. That's true. And yes. it's just cra- it just speaks to the craziness of this world. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, politely boxing off a compliment by saying something like, thank you. My husband loves the way I look. Tends to send a message to the person yes, it that puts a stop to confrontation. I yeah. totally agree. Kathy says, "How do you get your spouse to realize that they are doing it all the time?" Well, mm. first of all, um, watching this video mm-hmm. is a start. Mm-hmm. You know, doing research on flirtation and giving a, a key definition and examples of it, and show him or her how they align with these examples. Yeah. Because sometimes just hearing it from you, they minimize what you say, they disregard what you say. Oh, whatever. You're crazy. Mm-hmm. You're insecure. You're yeah. jealous. But then when you bring out the evidence and the proof, uh, I think it really will uh, shine light. And, and, and so the question is, if you are a flirt in your relationship, what do you do about it? Like, how do you stop this behavior? I think the first thing is, to your point, Kathy, having an honest conversation with your spouse, like being willing to admit, you know what? I, you know what? I do engage in this behavior. My intentions aren't to cheat. Even if your intentions are quote unquote good, yeah. my intentions are to cheat, but it's negatively impacting the relationship. And so listen, I'm letting you know, this is my issue. I want to get it under control. I want to fix this. So having the honest conversation first with your spouse is critical. Number two, get help. Like there's nothing wrong with getting professional help to overcome any issue, or any struggle book. that you have. Yeah. I mean, even I mean, something like this, setting boundaries. I mean, it's really about boundaries and anybody who's dealing with a flirt issue and they struggle with it themselves. It's it's not intentional. There's a reason why you have trouble setting that boundary. It's something inside of you where either you don't want to offend or you're trying to avoid or you want to appear a certain kind of way. There's just mm-hmm. all these reasons why you're doing that. And you just need to learn how to set proper boundaries for you and your personality style. Absolutely. Then get an accountability partner. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, here's the reality. We often talk about the dangers of certain type of opposite sex friends, but we never really talk about the dangers of same sex friends as well. I mean, if you roll with a group of people who are in a different relational status than you and it's okay for them, great. It's okay for them. Like I said, flirtation is not good or bad. It depends upon the season that you're in. It's good if you're single and seeking. It's bad if you're married, right? And committed. And so therefore, if you're involved with people who are flirting, if you're going to environments that breed that type of connection and could compromise the integrity of your relationship, then that's something that you need not do. So to have an accountability partner who holds you up to a standard, Mm -hmm. who reinforces the boundaries that you've created are critically important and pray, you know, certain things you just got to take to God, God, show me in your word, give me wisdom, give me know how, because I want to change my behavior for the betterment of my marriage. Guys, I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you got something out of today. We're talking about overcoming infidelity complexities. We're just getting started. This is going to be a tremendous series. We want you to tune in uh, and make sure, make sure that you share this with people. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share with those who need it and uh, get ready. Buckle up because we're going to take you for a ride. See you tomorrow. Love you guys. Can bring us down. Can't nothing bring us down. Our love is too high. Bring us down. Can't nothing bring us down. Bring us down. 
Can't nothing but me. 